Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona, an NFC Eastern Division encounter this afternoon. The 12 and 1 Washington Redskins against the Phoenix Cardinals. Just completed in Dallas, the Dallas Cowboys knock off the Saints. That is the fourth consecutive loss for New Orleans. And because of their loss, the Washington Redskins don't know it yet, but they have secured home field advantage throughout the playoffs. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Vern Lundquist along with Dan Fouts. We have a game that appears on paper to be a route, Dan. Washington favored by a couple of touchdowns, and yet Joe uh, Gibbs told us last night he's worried about this game. Why? Well, he's a world-class warrior, number one, but Joe Gibbs knows that teams that do well in the playoffs play at the end of the season. Now, this game doesn't mean anything for them. They've accomplished their three goals. They've, they're the NFC East champs. They've got the home field advantage. They're in the playoffs. But Joe Gibbs wants his team to play well. The key for the Redskins has been the play of their quarterback, Mark Rippon. He stayed healthy because he's only been sacked four times this year. Well, Mark Rippon has given the Redskins outstanding quarterbacking this year. That has not been the case for the Phoenix Cardinals. They lost Tim Rosenbaum in preseason to an injury. Tom Tupa started the first 11 games. He's been benched now for Stan Gilbaugh. And Gelba, the last two times these teams got together, he watched the game from the end zone at RFK with his father-in-law. He's playing for two things today, his future in the NFL and for to keep uh, Chris Chandler on the bench because Bugle told us yesterday he wouldn't be hesitant to put him in the game if Gelba struggles. The Washington Redskins will kick off to the Cardinals. It's Low Miller kicking deep to either Hill or Larry Centers. And this will be Larry Centers, a yard back, comes to the left. He's got a little bit of room. Out to the 37-yard line, Larry Centers. That is his longest kickoff of the season. Officially a 38-yard return. Much-traveled Stan Gelbaugh. This is his fourth start, third start, out of the University of Maryland. And he is joined by Louise Sharp, Vernon Smith, Bill Lewis, Lance Smith, and Tootie Robbins. The tight end doesn't catch many passes. Walter Reeves in the backfield, Johnny Johnson. And they open with three wide receivers, Randall Hill, Ernie Jones, and Ricky Prohl. They toss it left. Johnson comes and looks for blocking help. And he is stacked up by Andre Collins, number 55 of the Redskins. Defensively for the Redskins, and they shut out this Phoenix team in game three. Mann, Williams, Johnson, and Stokes. The linebackers are Marshall, Matt Millen, and Andre Collins. And in the secondary, Martin Mayhew, joined by Daryl Green, Brad Edwards, and Danny Copeland. Second down and eight. Two wide receivers split wide right. Motion on the right side, and they'll bring that back and start it over. I think they got Charles Mann offsides, trying to get off early inside against Tootie Robbins. A little bit too quick. Referee today is Bernie Kukar. <laughs> and that'll make it second down and three. He talked about how the Redskins shut out the Cardinals earlier this year. Well, they're shutting out a lot of people. They've allowed the fewest points in the NFL this year. They have three shutouts for the season, all three at home. One loss, of course, that to Dallas two weeks ago. Coming left, it's Johnny Johnson. Hit up high, shakes the tackle. Uh, Kurt Gavea, and then he is out of bounds with first down yardage across the 50. That's a gain of eight. There's Gavea and Johnny Johnson. The Cardinals still have yet to get a 100-yard game out of either of their running backs, Thompson or Johnson. Johnson's high, 93. He started the season bothered by a strained arch, and the ground game just hasn't been there much for them. Well, and you wouldn't figure it to be very good today against the Redskins. The Redskins have been outstanding against the rush all year long. There are the season totals for Johnny Johnson. First and 10 now across midfield, and they'll try to sweep to the left again. Flag is down in the offensive backfield. The tackle made by Andre Collins at the 46-yard line. This will be against Phoenix. They're going to call tripping on Louise Sharp working against Fred Stokes. Fred tripping, number 67 on the offense. 10-yard penalty, repeats the down. 
take a look at here's Sharp and here is Stokes as the ball comes out to the outside Luis is going to stick his leg out and bring Fred Stokes down. I think if he did not whip his leg up in the air he might have got away with that block. It was a good block. He had accomplished what he set out to do but that foot goes up in the air. Very easy for the referee to see it. And that makes it a first down and 20 opening moments of the game. Redskins stack it up against the run and they stuff it after a gain of a couple to the 43. So Gelbaugh yet to throw. This time Eric Williams makes the tackle. But obviously the Cardinals feel that they have an advantage running to their left side behind Louis Sharp and Vernus Smith. This is about three or four runs in a row that have gone to the left side. Anthony Thompson is checked in. There's Joe Bugle, nine years, the offensive line coach of the Washington Redskins, still a great friend of the Redskins staff, and he knows the Redskins team very well. Now Gelbaugh's first throw of the game. Finds a receiver, Randall Hill, on a crossing pattern. In front of Daryl Green, and that picks up yardage to the Redskin 44-yard line. Randall Hill acquired from Miami for a number one draft choice just after the season started. It's going to be fun to watch these two guys all day long. The protection is pretty good for Gelbaugh. He gets back in a hurry, but it's man-to-man -man coverage in the secondary. And this, uh, miss, this match here between Hill and Green will be real fun to watch. Both of them have blazing speed, and both of them think they're just a little bit faster than the other guy. Daryl Green, of course, won the NFL Fastest Man contest in the offseason for the fourth straight year. Third and five, no score in the game. Straight drop by Gelbaugh, under pressure, flips it out left side, incomplete. Caught by Larry Centers, but caught out of bounds, and it'll be fourth down. And that will bring on the punting unit, Rich Camarillo, for the Phoenix Cardinals. Well, you know that Richie Pettibone is going to test Stan Gelbaugh with all types of blitzes and stunts. Uh, the Redskin defense is difficult for a veteran quarterback for, for a guy that's had no training camp as Gelba uh, did not have with the Cardinals. It's going to be a very long and uh, tedious afternoon for him mentally. Ryan Mitchell leading punt returner in the league hoping to get a chance at this one. Camarillo sends it high. Mitchell lets it go and it bounces in for a touchback. That is the seventh touchback of the season for Rich Camarillo and the Phoenix Cardinals. So the Redskins hold. They are on offense before a very sparse crowd when we return. Ball game thus far. Mark Griffin and the Redskins on offense for the first time. September 25th, 1988 here. Mark Griffin got his first start as a Redskin. He threw for 303 yards and three touchdowns. But the Redskins lost that game, 30-21 to to the Phoenix Cardinals. That was the last time Phoenix defeated the Washington Redskins. And what a season Mark Griffin has had. 23 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. And you never forget your very first start in the NFL. He had a good one. First down and 10. Don Warren starting from Middleton in motion. Ernest Miner gets the handoff and surges out near the 24-yard line. Eric Hill makes the tackle. It's Lachey, McKenzie, Bostic, Schlereth, Jacoby, and Don Warren starting from Middleton up front. Miner in the backfield with Monk, Sanders, and Clark, the bossy and wide receivers. And Joe Gibbs said he really wants to work on the running game for that. It's been uh, something that hasn't been very productive for him the last couple weeks, but uh, defensively teams are stacking seven and eight men up on the line of scrimmage, shutting that run down. Now this time the Cardinals do not have seven up. They lay back. Twin set on the right side, the handoff to Biner. He's got a lot of room. And that's a first down Washington at the 34-yard line. But the Cardinals, are, they've got to change things up. You see that Fritz Shermer, the defensive coordinator for the Cardinals, he'll get, he's going to go with six guys in the box here. And so Rippon sees this, and he's going to give the ball to Biner on a little trap play here. I would uh, venture a guess that this is an audible by Rippon, seeing that the... Redskins have him outnumbered, and uh, they get a good play there for the first down. Gain of nine for Ernest Miner, first and ten from the 34. Miner goes left, gets a good block on the edge, and then is cut down. Good pursuit at the 22-yard line or the 37-yard uh, line by Ken Harvey. 
defensively for the Cardinals. Faulkner, Waller, and Patterson up front. Freddie Joe Nunn, Sidney Coleman starts for Tyrone Stowe, who is out with injuries. Eric Hill and Ken Harvey. And a big loss in the defensive secondary. Tim McDonald broke a bone in his foot during a practice in the off week, and he's out for the season. Dave Dewerson takes his spot. And now an injury for the Cardinals. Michael Zordich at the 50-yard uh, line. Making a motion with his hands that he was cut. And it's uh, obviously a leg injury of some type. The Cardinals cannot afford to lose Zordich. That would bring in uh, Steve Lofton, perhaps. They have to make all types of changes. They'll probably go with their nickel package here on second and long. They have indeed. Second down and seven. First game between these two teams in week three. The Cardinals were undefeated. They won their first two games on the road, and then they were blasted 34 0 by the Redskins. Second down. And off to Finer. They continue to work on the left side, and Finer is out to the 41 yard line. The tackle is made by Dave Dewerson, number 22, who was, uh, needs to come up big for the Cardinals today if they're going to stay in the ballgame. Well, Dorson's real familiar with this position that he's playing today. This is the rover back, or very similar to the system that he played when he was with the Bears under Buddy Ryan, that 46 defense. He said they should have named it the 22 defense. That was my number. They named it after Plank, but really it's, it fit my talents better than Plank's. Huh. Third and four, third and three from the 41-yard line. Art Monk starts in motion. The pass in the flat is caught. That's a first down. As Stephen Hobbs, number 86, came in and makes only his third catch of the season. And that's a gain of 10 and a Washington first down. Here's a matchup that we will keep track of all day long. Jim Lachey, number 79, against number 56, Ken Harvey. Uh, Rippon does a nice job here of going back five steps and getting rid of the ball. You can see Harvey had no chance at all going against Big Jim at 6'6 and 295 pounds or so. But the quick drop by the quarterback getting rid of the ball really helps that offensive line. First down and 10 from the Cardinal 49-yard line. They give it to Miner, and he's down to the 45. Eric Hill a part of the tackle. And Lachey is, is going to be recognized real soon as probably the finest offensive tackle in football. And this is why. He has the ability to run. He can pass block. Good vision here as he finds a man to knock out of the hole for Biner and get him an extra two yards. But he combines all those necessary skills to be labeled a great one. You uh, were his teammate for three years, right? Yeah, I broke him in. He was my blindside tackle. Did a heck of a job. That's why I'm up here with you now. <laughs> Second down at six. Rippin, left side. Caught. First down at the 31-yard line. Catch made by Art Monk, and that is the 130th consecutive game in which Art Monk has caught a pass. This is just uh, way too loose a coverage by Robert Massey against Monk, and Monk is just cruising now. He knows he's got this huge cushion, and he knows he's got his, a quarterback with a gun for a right arm. That ball was on a line. Easy catch for Art Monk. 1980, 787 catches ago, he made his first catch. It was a 10-yarder on third down from Joe Theismann. And that was his 788th career catch, number two all time. First down and 10. Miner again. Works it down inside the 25, the 24-yard line. We have no score in the game. Six and a half remaining first quarter, and the Redskins on the march with their first possession of the game. And in talking to Joe Gibbs yesterday, he said that the strength of his football team since he's been the head coach of the Redskins has always been that offensive line. He's been fortunate to have had two outstanding offensive line coaches in Joe Bugle and now Jim Hannafin and, and, uh, and also uh, Rennie Simmons. There's Jim Hannafin standing and turning, putting his hand up to shield himself from the sun. Second down and four. Former coach of the St. Louis Cardinals. Across the middle, caught, what a pop. Lorenzo Lynch with the tackle. You called it a pop, Fern. Let's take a listen to this one. A 
Well, we're up here in the stratosphere, and we could hear it. But it is a first down at the 20-yard line, 5-24 remaining in the game. First and 10. Miner again gets a couple down to the 18-yard line. The tackle made by Jim Waller. Well, this may be the highest broadcast booth in uh, the National Football League, if not. <laughs> I haven't seen one higher. We're somewhere up there, Dan Fouts. I think we're right in about here, Vern. And do the words vertigo mean anything to you? It's the one place in the league they give you a parachute when you enter the elevator. Way down that way. Second down, no score. 4.35 to go. First quarter of play, Redskins marching. Miner caught and dropped at the 25-yard line. It was Jim Waller who broke through Joe Bostic's block. Jim Waller, the third-year man from UCLA, a loss of six. And normally the, the uh, Cardinals would be in a four-man line, but right over the center is Waller. In a three-man line, he beats a double team here. Mix up in the backfield with the handoff between Rippon and Biner. But Waller wasn't mixed up at all. That's a big loss for the Redskins, thanks to this man. And that sets up a third down and 15 yards, maybe for the first down. This would really give the Cardinals a shot in the, in the arm if they can hold the Redskins to just a field goal attempt. Right side incomplete. Mark Monk cut in. Rippin threw it out. That'll bring on Chip Lomiller. Steve Locke, number 42, part of the coverage. And one of the things that Gibbs was worried about is that with the bye week, as the Cardinals had last week, that uh, Joe Bugle and his staff would change things up. And already we've seen them, instead of a four-man line on third and long and obvious passing situations, they've gone with a three-man line and they've dropped eight. They've dared the Redskins to run, and that time, uh, with the obvious pass, Rippon had nobody to throw it to against that eight-man secondary. Low Miller slumping. He missed two of five last week in the swirling winds of Los Angeles, and that is no good. He's now four of his last 11 field goals. After a superb start to the season, Chip Low Miller is struggling. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Hewlett Packard Laser Jet Printers. They'll get you noticed. The light beer with a great imported taste. Amstel Light, bright. And by Kodak Gold Film. Show your true colors. Jim Waller, a big part of denying the Washington Redskins their scoring opportunity. Now Stan Gilmore and the Cardinals on offense for the second time. Johnny Johnson starts in motion. Oh, boy, that play looked ugly. Oh, dear. Tim Johnson, number 78, who's had a terrific season, comes through and makes the tackle. Well, every play they're running has been to this left side. Sooner or later, the skins are going to catch on. Nobody blocks Johnson as he has a beeline right to centers. Drops him for about a two-yard loss. Lucky he held on to that ball. Tim Johnson, who had a huge game in the playoff win over Philadelphia last year, acquired last season from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Second down and 12. Gelba, short drop, right side, incomplete over the head of Ricky Prohl. Well, what else is going on around the National Football League? Dallas wins. They're 9-5. and five. And if Atlanta wins today, they'll tie New Orleans. Now, Philadelphia, a big win over the Giants. Chicago knocks off Green Bay. Houston wins the AFC title for the first time ever. San Diego's kicked the field goal with 11 seconds to go, and that one's in overtime. The Broncos sent a wild card spot, uh, the playoff spot today. And Detroit with an early lead over the New York Jets. Atlanta. And we'll uh, speed through the rest of them. Speed reading. Gelbar back into the flat. Caught by Larry Centers. And he didn't get much. It'll be fourth down. So Stan Gelbar and the Cardinal offense don't get much that time. 
Gilbo is under a, a, really a lot of pressure. He's trying to avoid having to go to training camp in February with the World League of American Football. As the most valuable player in that league last year, this is maybe his last shot at an NFL job as a quarterback. He is 28 years old. Time's running out. Ryan Mitchell waits for the punt from Rich Camarillo. Good one. Mitchell calls for the fair catch. And so they deny him the punt return opportunity. A 45-yard punt for Rich Camarillo. We are scoreless with 153 remaining opening quarter in Phoenix. You are watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. As the ads say, there are plenty of good seats available in Sun Devil Stadium. This guy is so far from the action, he's got a beeper on to tell him when somebody scores. <laughs> well, it's a non-sellout here for the 30th consecutive time. That is a National Football League record. They sold 43,000 tickets. And I don't know if that many people are here. Rip it back, left side. Caught. Now, it was a legal catch, and then he fumbled out of bounds. Lorenzo Lynch with a hit, a gain of 13. Now, this is a big pop by Lynch as he comes from the backside of Monk and knocks this ball out. But both feet are down, and the ball is out. That will probably be reviewed by our replay Of fish. course it will be reviewed. Yeah, there's the whistle. What are you talking about? Was there ever any doubt? I wanted to give him a break to start off the game. You know, if it can stop the game, it'll be reviewed. And George Slatke is the uh, man upstairs. It's looking at this play right here. The play has been ruled a catch on the field. It is being reviewed. That may not be conclusive enough evidence to overturn that ruling on the field. Lynch was happy when he got the news that it was being reviewed. Well, Lorenzo has a uh, reputation as being a big hitter. Came from the Chicago Bears. We've seen him already today put a big lick on Ernest Biner. That time, he hit Monk right on the ball with his right hand, popped it loose. This is going to take uh, a couple more seconds to get the call. Oh. Well, you got the last word from Bertie Kukar. And the greedy's lips, you got all of it. The play stands as called. Good. That was quick. Michael Zordich, who was injured in that last series. Free safety for the Phoenix Cardinals. First down and 10, Washington. 12 and 1 for the year. And they'll bring this one back. Start it over. Maybe a delay a game call. Yep. Delay a game on the offense. This type of start for the Redskins shows you why Joe Gibbs is worried. His field goal kicker misses a re relatively easy field goal. And now they have a uh, really inexcusable penalty. They had all that time during the review of the last play to get a play called. And Joe doesn't quite understand. That. He's trying to figure out from the referee why they didn't get uh, the full 25 seconds or 45 seconds after the administrative stoppage of play. All those big words they got in the NFL. You say them well. Much. Second and 15, the tackle made by Sidney Coleman in the 93. Eric Hill helping out. That last drive the Redskins had uh, consumed almost eight minutes of the clock, 55 yards in 13 plays, but they didn't get any points out of it. That's why Joe gives worries. <laughs> I wonder if he uh, has made his team aware of the fact that the Warriors lost it. I bet he has. Guarantee you he hasn't. I wouldn't even be surprised if he doesn't know right now. Probably true. Second down and 15. Left side, Biner screen pass. David Braxton, number 54, in on defense, makes the tackle. 
And that'll be a loss and a third down coming up as the second quarter gets underway. That is the end of the first quarter play from Phoenix with our score, the Redskins zip and the Phoenix Cardinals likewise. We are back at Sun Devil Stadium in Tempe, Arizona. Vern Lundquist and Dan Fouts. The Redskins and Phoenix Cardinals scoreless at the end of the first 15. And now Washington facing a third and long. Third and 18. Thus far in the ball game, they are one of two on third down conversions, 50% for the season. Rippin, great protection, finds Don Warren, but that's far short. Uh, the first down, and the Redskins will be forced to punt. Lorenzo Lynch with the tackle after the gain of eight. Oh, the third and long like that. A lot of teams are just going to rush four men along this line here and then drop the other seven. We've seen the difference now. The, Reds, uh, the Redskins saw to begin with a three-man line rushing Rippon. Now it's four-man line, but it's still all the deep guys are covered. Rippon has to come down to his outlet receiver. The Cardinals hold him again. Kelly Cookburn is on to punt for the first time, and John Jackson to return. Low snap. Brandis gets it back, but Cookburn controls. Now Jackson at the pin. Flag is down, and this one will come back and be penalized against the Cardinals inside the 10 yard line. Looks like they're going to get Steve Lofton, number 42. Obvious clip. And this will back the Cardinals up inside the 10 yard line. Big mistake. 50 yard punt and 13 on the return. But an illegal block. We have an illegal block in the back. Number 42 on the receiving team on the run back. Half the distance to the goal. That wipes out a fairly decent return by John Jackson. And the Cardinals do have the ball, but they've got it 95 yards away. Jay Johnson, 42 is Lofton. This is a case of Johnson just being too fast for Lofton. And in the old days, they used to call this clipping. But now in the 90s, Vern, this is an illegal block in the back. Still don't understand the difference. Still a penalty and a big mistake by Lofton. And because of that, the uh, Redskins, uh, the Cardinals rather, have gone with their power offense. Now Ron Wolfley comes in and double tight end. That's Wolfley in motion. Johnny Johnson gets the handoff and runs into Wilbur Marshall after a gain of one after the six, seven yard line. See a lot of teams coming off their goal line as the Cardinals are doing now. Go with the same personnel and the same type of offensive plays as if you turn it around and they were going in for a touchdown. The big guys in there, Wolf Lee, who has yet to carry the ball this year, is at fullback. And you got Jordan and Reeves as the tight end and H-back. And only one wide receiver in pro. Second down and nine. No score in the game. Opening moments of quarter number two. Play fake. Gelbach chased by Marshall. Has to get rid of it. And he just did. Gelbaugh has his back turn, faking the ball to Johnny Johnson to the left. He never sees Wilbur Marshall coming on this blitz. What a surprise right there. Got to get rid of it. Nice job of just dumping it and saving his team two points. But on second down and long, Pettibone and the Redskins love to blitz. Their tendency so far this year is about 75% blitz on second and long. That brings up third down and nine. Stunts by Charles Mann. Gelbaugh gets rid of it incomplete. And it'll be fourth down. Randall Hill, the intended receiver. Gelbaugh, who threw four interceptions in the last game the Cardinals played, the loss to Philadelphia here two weeks ago. Is that a comic book? <laughs> if it's a Cardinal playbook, it might be. <laughs> but that's uh, Don Bro looking at the offensive fronts and defensive alignments uh, the last time the Redskins had the ball on offense. Camarillo will punt it away to Brian Mitchell, who has two touchdowns returned 
from punt formation this year and had one call back of 70 yards in game one between these two teams. And that is a returnable punt for Mitchell. But excellent downfield coverage. The ball is loose, and the Cardinals have recovered at the 40. Steve Heitch. And Brian Mitchell has had fumble problems this year. He almost cost the Redskins the game in Houston, or against Houston. He still hasn't learned when to call for the fair catch. Right here, this ball continues to sail. Watch how close the Cardinal is. Johnny Jackson, no, oh, that's Anthony Edwards, 83. Somebody's got to help Mitchell out, tell him when to call for that fair catch. But it becomes an ego thing with these return men. His idol is Mike Nelms, who never called for a fair catch with the Redskins. Mitchell wants to be just like him. That is the sixth fumble this year on returns for Mitchell. And the third that he's lost. Larry Centers breaks the tackle. And he gets to the 31-yard line. A big play on special teams as that one was really lifts an entire team. This is the Cardinals' best play of the game, and it takes an extra effort by centers as the Cardinals go with two running backs, Johnny Johnson and centers. The centers breaks the tackle of Eric Williams. Now the stiff arm on Brad Edwards, and that's about an eight-yard gain on first down. Just a footnote for Joe Bugle's team. That was the 21st fumble they have recovered this year. They had 12 fumble recoveries in the first three games. One of their few bright spots yes. on the year. Hand off to centers. Nope, it'll be third down. Tim Johnson makes the tackle. But again, it's the Cardinals changing up their offense uh, as they did their defense with their different type of schemes. We're seeing the Cardinals going with two running backs, something they haven't done since the last time the Cardinals and the Redskins got together. It didn't work too good for them in that ball game. But uh, later, a little bit later in the season, Centers is healthy, and he gives Bugle an added dimension in that backfield. It'll be third down and one. Phoenix goes with three tight ends. They bring in Willie Williams, number 60, as the third tight end, joining Walter Reeves and Tim Jordan. And they load it up to the left side. That's not enough. It'll be fourth down. Matt Millen makes the tackle. Millen and Tim Johnson down at the bottom of that pile. That's really the key. Because Johnny Johnson never got a chance to get airborne, as so many of those running backs like to do on third and short. This is a lead play right up the middle. But Wolfley does not get his block on Millen. And Lance Smith doesn't get his block either. So the Redskins hold now. Well, Joe Bugle said yesterday they would gamble some. They will go for it on fourth down. They're dead last in the NFL on fourth down conversions this season. But the odds are in their favor. <laughs> Backs are split. Gelbaugh into the flat. Has a man. And they have just converted their second fourth down of 1991. Larry Centers with the catch. Joe Bugle telling us yesterday morning, we need to play a near-perfect game to win this one. This is a well-designed play. Uh, Johnson's going to come out here and pick. Centers comes out, and Delba does a nice job of being patient with this ball. There's the block by Johnson, a screen there. Illegal play, but rarely called on fourth and short situations, as that one was. There's a play stoppage and uh, apparently a player down. Yes, indeed. Alvoid Mays, number 20 of the Redskins, off the field of play. So while the medical staff tends to Alvoid Mays, time has been called. Cardinals have a first down when we come back. The off summary is sponsored by Bud Dry. Houston joins Washington and Buffalo as division winners today with their victory. Denver won, and they're in the playoffs after an offseason. The Raiders can clinch with a victory today, and there are a ton of teams who still have aspirations for the playoffs. And a ton of head coaches 
with aspirations for next year. Yeah. And, and a, the possibility of a high turnover rate. First down and 10. We have no score. Vern Lundquist and Dan Fouts. 9.57 to go. First half. Gilbaugh drills it and finds Ernie Jones. First and goal of the two. A 27-yard gain. One of the best routes that Jones runs is the deep turn in. But the protection for Gelbaugh is perfect this time as he gets back five steps and has a clear throwing lane. Just got the ball over Marshall's hands. And now the strength of Ernie Jones, something that a lot of teams don't know about, gives the Cardinals the ball in the two-yard line. 51st catch of the season. First and goal as the Cardinals try and break the scoreless tie. Anthony Thompson in the backfield. He gets the handoff. The dive down to the one. The inside the one about a foot away. Well, the Washington Redskins have given up only eight rushing touchdowns this year. And how anemic is the Phoenix Cardinal running attack? They have scored four rushing touchdowns for the season. Well, Anthony Thompson scored 68 in college at Indiana on the ground. And he gives it his all here as he takes it down inside the one. Another effort like that, and the Cardinals will have five on the year, although Thompson's on the bench. Three tight ends in. That is the fifth rushing touchdown of the season. Number five comes in game 14, and Johnny Johnson's touchdown has put the Cardinals on top. Exact same play, but to the right side of the offensive line this time. Johnson is six foot three, 220 pounds. And a great job by Wolfley pushing Wilbur Marshall back. And there's no denying Johnny Johnson that touchdown. And no review. I don't think. <laughs> Greg Davis is on to tackle on the extra point. Tim Jordan will hold and Connie Kawhi will center it back. As the Cardinals take advantage of the fumble by Brian Mitchell on the punt return. A big play to Ernie Jones set up a one-yard touchdown by that man, Johnny Johnson. For only the fifth time this season, the Phoenix Cardinals have scored on the ground. And with Johnson's six points, they take an early lead. Johnny Johnson, the second-year man, gets the touchdown from a yard out, and the Cardinals trying to halt a five-game losing streak Take a 7-0 lead over the 12-1 Washington Redskins. Greg Davis to kick off. Ricky Urbans. Brian Mitchell with a deep man. This will be Ricky Urbans at the 8-yard line. And he's cut down as he gets near the 19. Ron Wolfley, the captain of the special teams, number 24, he is the first man down. And Jock Jones also a part of that. Coming up next Saturday, a special edition of the NFL on CBS. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Chicago Bears. Chicago, a big win today as they try and hold off Detroit for the Central Division title. Chicago and Tampa, Saturday for the NFL today, the last word before kickoff. Ricky Urbans is in the lineup now for the Redskins replacing Ernest Miner. Play fake, Rippin looks deep. Hit as he lets it go, and it's caught by Gary Clark. Dave Dorson on the safety blitz was at Rippin's midsection. But the pass complete for a gain of 21. Tremendous confidence by Rippin in throwing this ball. Watch number 22, Dorson, come right up the middle after the fake. He does a nice job of sifting his way through there. But this ball is thrown way out in front of Clark. And under tremendous duress here, but with the confidence that if he just lays it up there, that Clark will get underneath it. Big play by Ripon. 21-yard gain, first down at the 41. Ricky Irvins in the backfield now. Here comes the rush from Harvey, the pass right side. That's caught. Art Monk with another grab. Well, the 49ers trying to put together a win streak and keep their playoff hopes alive. Here's Greg. All right, Vern, at the King Dome in Seattle, Steve Bono getting the job done the last several weeks. Two yards to Harry Sidney. The extra point is good. In the second quarter, the 49ers lead the Seahawks 7-6, Vern. 
All right, Greg, 7 nothing here on Johnny Johnson's one-yard touchdown run. There's Bill Lewis and Louise Sharp talking things over on the Cardinal sideline. Things have gone well so far. And Jim Waller momentarily out of the lineup. Second down. Ernest Biner wants to throw it. Does. Right side. Good coverage. It's incomplete. Biner has a touchdown pass this season to Ricky Sanders in the opener against Detroit. That did not look like Dan Fouts. Well, that was a real good decision by Biner, though, because Sanders was well covered by Aeneas Williams down the field. Uh, Biner's lucky he didn't get called for intentional grounding. He threw it about 10 yards out of bounds. But uh, there you see Humphrey telling him that's a good decision. Don't worry about it. Save, save the loss and the interception. Third down and three. Word from the bench that Joe Jacoby is suffering from the flu and will alternate with Ed Simmons for the duration of the game. And Simmons is in there now. Here's Rippin, deep left side. Zone coverage and incidental contact is the ruling. That's incomplete as Robert Massey, number 40, had coverage, and it'll be fourth down. And the lack of a running game is hurting the Redskins here in the first half. Biner has nine carries and only 26 yards, and Irvins has yet to carry the ball on the ground. Kelly Goodburn comes on. This is really the Cardinal Super Bowl game here. If they can hang a W up against the Redskins, that's accomplishing a whole lot. John Jackson at the 10-yard line. Bu Seven. Bugle could really use it. Oh, boy. Short, Jackson, 15-yard line. And he moves it out near the 25, probably the 24 by the time they spot it. A 38-yard punt by Kelly Goodburn. 11 on the return by Jackson. Cardinals have the lead and the football. On the Phoenix sideline, Jim Waller, the defensive nose tackle, ice on his uh, left wrist. And look at this, Dan. Well, we talk about each stadium having x-ray machines. Well, they do, and that's a pretty good example of giving the guy bad news. It's like a broken left hand. Cardinals have the ball on offense with a 7-0 lead and seven minutes to go first half. Yell ball with a play action. Comes into the right flat, and nice defensive work by Martin Mayhew, number 35. Boy, he was right at Ricky Prohl's back. Good job of zone coverage by the Redskins here. And again, it's an inexperienced quarterback going against a very experienced secondary. Take a look at Matt Mayhew on the outside here. He's going to let this receiver go deep and then turn back to the inside as this guy comes for the attempted completion. Watch Mayhew keep his eye on the quarterback, break on the ball, then get the big hit. Yell ball now four out of nine. Second and ten. Short setup. That one complete to pull, but that's only to the 30-yard line. It'll bring up a third down. Well, we talked about Stan Gelbaugh needing to play well in this game and the remainder. He, of course, the most valuable player for London in the World League last year, but he's been around. He was a sixth-round draft choice of the Cowboys in 86, time in Buffalo. Hunted for Saskatchewan for a year. Had a cup of coffee in Cincinnati, Dallas, Kansas City. And he and his wife are expecting their first child December 23rd. So he's got that on his mind as well back in uh, Poolsville, Maryland. And Monty Coleman is injured. Gelba really didn't get all the practice time that uh, he would have liked to have had this week or the last two weeks. Number 17 here is Chris Chandler, and he got 40% of the snaps. Bugle wants to get him ready and see what he can do here in the near future so that they can figure out who they want to keep as their backup quarterback when Tim Rosenbaugh is healthy next summer. And Tom Tupa, number 19, inactive today, started the first 11 games. Third down. Bill Lewis snaps it back. Four-man rush for the Redskins. That one on a line to pull. First down at the 40-yard line in front of A.J. Johnson. A gain of nine. Ricky Prohl. This is the same route that the Cardinals ran, and, and Mayhew got the big hit on Prohl. But this time, they're in a different type of coverage. 47 is A.J. Johnson. He's got the man-to-man -man coverage. Nice push-off push job there by Prohl to get the separation for his quarterback and the first down for his team.
First down and 10. Delbaugh now 6 of 11 for 64 yards. They'll keep it on the ground. Johnny Johnson, who has scored the only touchdown of the game, 535 remaining in the first half as he picks up two. But in talking to the Cardinal receivers and uh, noticing the success the Cowboys had when they beat the Redskins in RFK, they said they have to be physical with both Daryl Green, Martin Mayhew, and uh, whoever the Redskins have play cornerbacks out there. They're all little guys, and the Cowboys were physical with them. They pushed off on a lot of routes, and already today we've seen the strength of Bernie Jones come into play, and that's what they want to do. Elbar rolls right, looks deep for Randall Hill, who has his man beat, and the catch is made. No juggling. I thought he had made it, but he was juggling it as he went out of bounds. We'll see if it's juggling or not, Vern. It's a heck of a throw by Gelbaugh. Great coverage by Daryl Green. And it is juggling. That's a good call by Roy Clymer, the back judge. He doesn't have his feet down either. There's his left foot. He drags that right foot, but he doesn't have control of the ball. Perfect call by the official. Randall Hill will head to the left side. Seven catches two weeks ago against Philadelphia this season high. Third and nine. Blitz coming to the Redskins. Gelbaugh lobs it out. Caught by Johnny Johnson. Gets a block from Walter Reeves and a first down at the Redskin 42. A gain of 15. Perfect play selection by the Cardinals. Watch the blitz come by the Redskins. And out in front of Johnson is going to be number 69, Vernus Smith here. And he does get that good block, Vern. Also, Randall Hill helps out down the field. A nice play by the Cardinals and a great call by Jerry Rome, the coordinator for the Cardinals. And it was Vernus Smith instead of Walter Reeves. That's a 69 instead of an 89. First and 10, the ball marked down at the 44-yard line. 4-10 to go, first half. Delay play. And they give to Larry Centers for a couple. And he runs into Eric Williams, number 75. Well, these Redskins led the Rams last week in Los Angeles, 7-6 at halftime, and Joe Gibbs kicked over a chair. Uh, yeah, I, I would be... Something is in danger in there right now. I think they're in there bolting the chairs down. <laughs> you know, he, he's got a couple of moves in the locker room. He, he's been known to... Throw oranges, uh, put his fist through uh, blackboards, knock over the Gatorade, so they better be button, buttoning things down in the Redskin locker room. Second down. Well, he said he was worried, and we have seen that he had cause. Blitz coming again, but good protection. Intercepted. Martin Mayhew gets his third pick of the season. And Gelbaugh never saw it because he was on his back in the arms of Eric Williams. Ernie Jones against Mayhew out here, and Jones is going to have him beat. Right here, it's the move to the outside. The ball is thrown to the inside. Poor decision by Gelbaugh trying to make a big play. Didn't keep his eye on the receiver long enough. That's the sixth interception of the season for Gelbaugh. Wilbur Marshall and Louise Sharp just prior to the timeout. Some finger pointing going on. Yeah, Sharp doing his George Foreman Im imitation there. <laughs> Coming up on the Dockers NFL Today halftime report, Greg and Terry with all the scores, highlights, and latest information from around the league, plus a complete playoff update. Houston and Denver got into the playoffs today. It may take the entire halftime to have a <laughs> complete right. playoff picture update well we do know that the Redskins are at home for the duration of the playoffs because of the New Orleans Saints lost to Dallas today and of course Dallas and Philadelphia both winning they play each other next week in Philadelphia first and ten now Cardinals lead it Gelbaugh play fake chased by Charles Mann lets it go caught Ernie Jones out of bounds at the 24 yard line Charles Mann Putting the pressure on Stan Gelbaugh. Man.
Mann, who in game one of these two teams had two sacks, and that was a day he'll never forget as Charles Mann's wife gave birth to their second baby the night before the game. First son, Cameron, he was up all night long. And the baby uh, born at 645 in the morning, said he was so tired, he didn't think he could stand up during the game and played a terrific ball game. Bothered by a knee injury, though. Second down and two. 153 to go before halftime. Johnson, sharp for the block. Johnson with the run. Well, the Cardinals are fired up. You saw the fight before with uh, Louis Sharp. Watch as he comes out here. But there's no support by the Redskins as Johnson gets into the secondary and then uses the power and speed that took him to the Pro Bowl last year to get away from Daryl Green right there. Good sharp cut. Takes it all the way down inside the five. Johnny Johnson equals his longest run of the season, 21 yards. The longest run for the Cardinals is only 22. There's Johnson, and he's got his second rushing touchdown of the day. This is a Phoenix team that has lost its last six to the Redskins. In the last three, they were outscored 103 to 10. But they now have a 13, soon to be 14 point edge. And that was just pure desire by Johnson and that left side to get in the end zone. The Redskins had all kinds of guys there to stop him, but he wasn't going to be denied. Johnny Johnson in the first half has equaled his season output of touchdowns. On the ground, he's got two. Davis's extra point is good. Well, again, this is why Gibbs was worried. His team is flat, and they're not tackling. We saw a missed tackle by Green, and this time three Redskins can't hold out Johnny Johnson. It's an emotional ball game, and if you don't come ready to play, and the other team sees the moment, as the Cardinals have done, you can be in big trouble no matter what your record is in this league. Cardinals make uh, wise use of their timeouts after the pass interception and pin the Redskins back inside the 10, get the ball back and go 52 yards. And Gelbaugh, after throwing that interception and pinned the Redskins back, he came back on the next drive. And that's the important thing, is what do you do after you have a bad play? How do you perform? Well, he's performed very, very well. The big pass to Ernie Jones over the middle, then he hit Jones on near the sidelines. And then this man, Johnny Johnson, two straight runs, a 21-yarder, and then the touchdown. Cardinals are got it rolling. Fourteen zip, sixty one seconds to go, first half. And the Redskins have all three timeouts, so you know they're going to be going for it. Joe Bugle looking for his first victory. Against the team in whose employ he found himself for nine years. Ryan Mitchell, two yards back, will bring it out. And he is popped by Lorenzo Lynch. A return of 27. It's going to be the uh, Lorenzo Lynch natural sound day. Oh, a hard plastic on hard plastic. Another big hit for number 29 of the Cardinals. Washington has all three timeouts left. Detroit leading the Jets. Atlanta over the Rams. That's a really big game for the Falcons. Biner catches the pass, and he's down at the 30. Keep in mind now that New Orleans lost their fourth in a row today, so if Atlanta can continue its late season surge, and uh, win that game, they're tied for the division. Raiders leading Buffalo. Second down, ripping. Incomplete. Caught by Gary Clark, but he came down out of bounds. And it'll be third down. 
Boy, it really appeared that Clark could have got both feet down on that catch. He kind of skipped out of bounds at the end of the play. Take a look at it. Ball is well thrown. And he just steps out, gets the left foot down, but the right foot's way out of bounds. Third and five with 32 seconds in the Three-man rush. Rippin. The binder for the first down at the 38-yard line. And we'll see if the Redskins use one timeout. They do. Mark Rippin, who uh, seems almost a cinch for the Pro Bowl this year with 23 touchdowns and the 10 interceptions and a few sacks. How do you account for the turnaround for him? Well, I, I think that you, you hit it right on the... Uh, Edburn when you said he's only been sacked four times that tells me a couple of things number one the offensive line is doing a good job but number two and probably more importantly is that Mark has a better understanding of where to go when teams blitz him he's on the same page you hear that cliche all the time uh, with his wide receivers uh, so much of what the Redskins do in their passing game is predicated on reading defenses and having blitz adjustments when they're the defense comes with the blitz, and I think that's been his biggest uh, improvement right there is knowing where to go with the ball in pressure situations. First down and 10. 14 nothing with 23 seconds to go first half. Ripping back. Lobs it out, caught by Don Warren, the tight end, and that gets him out to the 47-yard line. And they will go with the hurry up now. They have two timeouts left. They do go. Uh, they do call timeout. Redskins have been very good in the two-minute offense this year, but with only 14 seconds to go, and they've got quite a ways to go to get Low Miller in range. And now, the question is, if you get him in range, is he going to put it through? Well, Low Miller missed one from 59 yards last week in the uh, in the wind in Los Angeles. He might just be tired. You know, he's he's kicked 49 extra points, 32 field goals, a lot of kickoffs, and a lot of kickoffs. <laughs> 409 points for the Redskins coming in, and they still have uh, two and a half games to go. Uh, one of the many gaudy statistics for this Redskin bunch, and they do trail 14 nothing here. We don't want to lose sight of that fact, but coming into this game, they had outscored their opponents by 240 points this year and moved to a 12 and 1 record. Second down and short, Ricky Sanders doesn't appear to be really certain where to go. Rippin pulls up. That's knocked out of his hands and recovered by the Redskins. Picked up by Ricky Urbans. Freddie Joe Nunn knocked it out. And it took a fortuitous bounce right up into the hands of a Redskin teammate. But they're going to bring it back to where... Here's the swipe by Freddie Joe Vern, as you called it, the right hand right on the ball. And here's that lucky bounce. Irvin's pick is, picks it up, but they're going to bring it back to where Irvin's picked it up because it's a fumble in the last two minutes. That's the old Ken Stabler rule. And for, unfortunately, Vern, I was part of that ball game. As Stabler went back to pass and threw the ball underhand, they called it a fumble. Banizak picked it up. He rolled it to about the five where he rolled it off to Casper who rolled it in the end zone. For the touchdown for the Raiders. Good, good rule, though. And a good job by the officials recognizing where the fumble occurred. And time has been called now with three seconds left. Well, I think that goes as a sack, which, and it is a sack, and that is the fifth sack of the season. Freddie Jonan gets credit for it. It was the first time that Mark Griffin has been sacked since the last play of the first quarter of the game against Philadelphia the last week in September. That's a string of eight games, almost eight and a half. So, Freddie Joe Nunn.
The fifth sack of the season on Mark Griffin. And now third down. Griffin coming to the right side. So that one string is over. And here's the, the Hail Mary for Gary Clark. And it's knocked down. So the 14-point underdog Phoenix Cardinals are up by 14. That's the end of the half. With our score, Phoenix 14 and the Redskins nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Mitsubishi, the word is getting around. Sony, where imagination and innovation create the ultimate in sight and sound. Energizer brand batteries, they keep going and going. And by Bud Dry, dry brood so it drinks like it satisfies completely. They ever call you a liar. But if you tell me that you're not surprised, oh. I might question your, your veracity. No, I, uh, well, no, I'm not really surprised. <laughs> and, you know, the amazing thing is that Gibbs told us yesterday he's worried about these times, these type of games, when he's a 14-point favorite. Well, he's the 14 points down right now, and this is why. The big play in the game was this turnover here, the fumbled punt by Mitchell that's recovered by Heitch. Anthony Edwards with the pressure there, but, again, Mitchell doesn't call for the fair catch when maybe he should have. That sets up the first touchdown, first of two for Johnny Johnson. And both of them were really determined. Watch how high he gets here to get in the end zone the first time. But on the second one, he goes over both Matt Millen and Gavea. And with the help of Daryl Green, not those three guys couldn't keep him out of the end zone. This touchdown came at the end of a 57-yard drive following uh, some very fine use of the timeouts by the Cardinals to hold the Redskins back inside the 10. They got the punt and then went in for that second touchdown. Rushing yardage, only 32 for the Redskins, and that's been a problem for them ever since losing to Dallas. And the passing yards haven't been that many as well. And uh, the statistical edge owned by Phoenix thus far, 154 to 121. And how about Stan Gelbaugh? He is fighting for a position on the National Football League roster. And uh, how do you grade him out in the first half? I think the way he came back from that interception, we saw him on the sidelines very upset. He went over, uh, got on the phone to talk to Jerry Rome up in the press box. Jerry obviously told him to put it behind him that the most important thing is the next drive. And he performed very well on that drive that got him the second touchdown. Question is now, will Gibbs go to his no huddle offense here to start the second half? The last two weeks, he's done it three times when he felt his team needed a start, some type of kick start to uh, get them rolling. Thus far, there have been no reports of reverberations in the Redskin locker room at halftime. And Joe's not limping, so if he did kick something, he didn't hurt himself. But Sh uh, Shirt he, is dry. You know, the thing, the thing about the uh, no huddle offense, Gibbs likes it as a changeup. He doesn't want to use it as a steady diet. He still wants to grind it out, take time off the clock, and wear his opponents out. Ricky Urbans, Brian Mitchell, ready to return the kickoff of Greg Davis. This is Urbans, and he has hit it knocked down near the 20-yard line. Lorenzo Lynch again, a return of 16. And Jock Jones, the former Cleveland Brown, also a part of it. And the last man up is Johnny Jackson. Robert Massey, thank your pardon. So Washington takes over. Now, they were up 7-6 to six against Los Angeles last week and ripped it open in the third quarter. See what they can do now, trailing by 14. And the sackless streak came to an end at the end of the second quarter. First sack since the last game in September for the Redskins. Rip in deep left side, but tended for Monk and overthrown Lorenzo Lynch for the coverage. But Gibbs has to be concerned about his running game. In that first half, just 32 yards on the ground in seven carries by Ernest Biner. We haven't seen Ricky Urbans at all with any carries. He may be the spark that Gibbs needs to get this offense going. Mark Schler at number 69, second down and 10. Ball at the 20. Redskins have the Giants and the Eagles left in regular season. They have, however, secured home field advantage throughout the playoffs, regardless of what happens here. Biner goes left, 
Eric Swan makes the tackle, number 98. This is one of those changes. They've moved Swan to the nose tackle in this nickel defense. Let's check him out. 320 pounds or so right in the middle. And the good job of fighting off the block of Schlereff and then bringing down Biner for the loss. Third and ten. Rippin. And to a receiver who slipped, Gary Clark, and then gets up and makes the grab for a first down. Uh, if the Redskins are going to come back and win this ball game, it's going to be, be because of players such as uh, Gary Clark and Mark Rippin. Rippin has really emerged as the leader on this team, which is good because quarterbacks should be the leaders, but that pass there really sent a message to Clark and his offense that he means business. That's a first down and 10 now. And again, a three-man front. Jim Waller is out with a broken left hand, by the way. And Swan in at nose tackle. That's caught by Ricky Sanders. First down at the 41 of the Phoenix Cardinals. Lorenzo Lynch with the tackle. Sanders with a gain of 22 has a touchdown catch in each of the last three games, though for the season his numbers are way down. Well, when you have time to throw, as Rippon does this time, watch Sanders on the inside here. Just find the seam in the secondary. You talk about seams all the time. Well, all it is is throwing between defensive players. Good job that time. First down and 10 for 41. Here's Biner. And he's inside the 40 to the 38. Dave Duerson makes the tackle. The longtime Chicago Bear and erstwhile New York Giant. There was a little bit of a confrontation on the near side. Doesn't amount to much. Ed Simmons involved. Again, word from the bench in the first half that Joji Kilby suffers from the flu. It's Robert Massey acquired from the New Orleans Saints last summer. One time number two draft choice of the Saints. Second down and seven. Pressure coming at Rippon, but he gets rid of it to Gary Clark. And that's good for another first down at the 23. Gary Clark had an interesting perspective on Mark Rippon last night. He said he uses his intelligence to get out of trouble where other quarterbacks might use their athletic ability. It helps to have time to throw to, to, to use that intelligence. Rippon comes off Clark to begin with, and now he allows him to slide in the hole to the outside for the completion. But if you don't have time to throw, you're not going to have time to make those moves in the secondary. Ricky Urban's now in the backfield in place of Miner. First down and 10, 14 nothing. Redskins trail, short setup, pass caught by Ricky Sanders. And they move the ball inside the 20 near the 18. David Braxton, number 54 with the tackle. Well, this is a good drive for the Redskins, but yet they've only been able to gain three yards on the ground, and that was a real concern of Gibbs is his anemic rushing attack. It hasn't gotten any better today against a Cardinal team that uh, ranks at the bottom in rushing defense. Second down, short. We have used almost four minutes of the third quarter. Irvins cuts back. First down inside the 15 of the 13. Dewarson with the tackle. Well, look at the comparison of the first 10 games in the last three for the Redskins, Dan. One of the problems has been the uh, health of Ernest Biner. He was hurt earlier in the year, had a bad knee, and is probably, uh, for sure, not playing at 100%. But I really believe that the key, if the Redskins turn it around on the ground, will be number 32, Irvins. He adds a lot coming out of that backfield. And he is in there now and gets the handoff. One time Southern California running back. Found it interesting what Joe Gibbs said about Ricky Irvins because he's been a real find for the... Uh, for the Washington team. Joe said Charlie Casserly, the director of player personnel, put together all the running plays of the six backs they were considering taking. 
and they went back to Ricky Irvin's junior year because he was injured as a senior at Southern Cal. Looking at the six players, they settled on Ricky Irvin, and he's come through for them here at the end of the year. Second down and six. Audible, Warren starts in motion. Griffin rolls that way. Pass is caught by Gary Clark. Inside the five, near the three. The tackle made by Steve Lofton. Griffin obviously saw something in that defense that told him he'd have man-to-man -man on the outside. He audibled, moved his tight end to the side he wanted to roll to, and got the good play to Clark. Now they're going to have to measure to see if Clark got enough for the first. But getting back to Irvin's, uh, talking to Rod Dauhauer, he said that the thing about Irvin's is that he's made a place for himself in the lineup that he's too good, too talented to uh, be kept out of the lineup. He's a good changeup for uh, Biner. There's the first down. And Gibbs likes to have a lot of different players. Uh, he knows how injuries can affect his ball club. And when you add uh, Gerald Riggs, the short down and goal line specialist, that's a pretty good mix in the backfield. Irvin's with only two carries thus far. Irvin's also said he liked going to the Redskins because he didn't have to change any of his wardrobe. <laughs> Same colors as SC. Trojan the Redskins. First and goal, 14 0. Redskins trail. Irvin's stuffed. It's Gerald Riggs, beg your pardon, who has become nothing more than a goal line specialist for the Redskins. He has 10 touchdowns for the season. But there's just no push by that offensive line. Watch the Cardinals come across with penetration. They push the Redskins back or at least hold their ground, and there's no place for Gerald Riggs to go. Late shot there by Lorenzo Lynch. That's an exclamation point. Redskins work against the Cardinal defense that has given up 23 touchdowns on the ground. So they are susceptible. But here's a play fake. Griffin wide open touchdown. Terry Orr, who has discovered a brand new life since being claimed from the San Diego Chargers, a one-time 10th round draft choice of the Redskins. And that's his third touchdown of the season. You think he was wide open, Vern? <laughs> here he is right here. Watch the fake. And he just slips into the secondary, or what should be a secondary. Easy touchdown. Nice touch by Rippin. And that brings on Low Miller to cut the lead in half. Well, a most impressive opening second half drive of 80 yards in 12 plays. It took six minutes and 43 seconds. And the Redskins now trail by seven. Hannafin, the offensive line coach. Talks it over with his troops as Chip Woman gets ready to kick off. Randall Hill and Larry Centers await the kick now for the Phoenix Cardinals. Bye-bye. Well, we've got football for you here. A lot of interesting things going on in this 14th week of the season. Next Saturday, the Chicago Bears play host to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at 12 o'clock Eastern. The Bears, who've won six of the last seven Central Division titles, are in a fight with the Lions for this year's division title. They're led once again by a stingy defense and the ever-popular refrigerator pairing. It all starts with the NFL today. The last word before kickoff at 12 noon Eastern time. 14-7 here as Stan Gelbaugh leads the Cardinals back on the field. The toss to Johnson. He comes left and is cut down as he gets to the 21-yard line. Take a look at the touchdown. Here's Orr on the side, here, and there's a man guarding him. But as the play goes away, he slides to the inside, and there's just nobody there. That's Lorenzo Lynch looking for another big hit. And he says, oops, there's my man. Easy touchdown for Terry Orr. Young man from Abilene, Texas, and the University of Texas. Second down at 9, 7.35 to go. Third quarter of play. 
stunts by the Redskins. And here comes the pressure. And the sack supplied by Tim Johnson is fifth of the year. Approval coming from Matt Miller. Real nice uh, stunt here on the right side of the line. Watch Stokes go to the inside, and Johnson's going to loop all the way to the outside for the sack. Stokes takes two men, almost three with him, and that just leaves Johnson with a clear shot on the quarterback and about a 12-yard loss. And that's a loss of 11, actually, officially, and it makes it third down and 20. Real good teamwork there between Stokes and Johnson. Now, three-man front, and the Cardinals hand it off to Larry Centers. Knowing that won't gain much, they uh, apparently opt to give it up. Wilbur Marshall with the tackle this time. And you wonder what Joe Gibbs might have done at halftime. I, I really doubt if he was too emotional. This is a veteran ball club. They know that they're playing terrible in that first half. And the one thing Joe doesn't have to do is, is motivate them. They motivate themselves. They've got a good core of players that have been with Joe for 11 years or so. And they know what to do. They come out in the second half and they're fired up. Camarillo is on the punt to Brian Mitchell, who will hang on to this one. No fair catch, but he does hang on. Nonetheless, he is knocked down as he gets pushed backward to the 27-yard line by Anthony Edwards. Another bad decision by Brian Mitchell. He could have fumbled that ball as well. 54-yard punt, minus three on the return. Point. He's got a 15-yard free run at Brian Mitchell. He even has time to break down and stop and then make the tackle. Mitchell has to call for a fair catch there. And because of the minus three on the return, Ernest Miner runs the ball, and Dave Dewerson makes the tackle at the 32-yard line. Dewerson, whose nine-year career may be coming to an end, and said he's uh, going to take his law school application exam again. He took them back in 84, but the results expired if you don't uh, attend to go to law school. One of the bright young men in this league. Yeah, wants to get involved in labor law, and at this point, not sure which side he wants to be on. Right. Has had experience on both sides of that fence. Second down, 14-7, 5.35 to go, third quarter to play. Ernest Beiner gets the handoff, and squirts through left guard out across the 40, and that's a red skin first down before Freddie Joe Nunn makes the tackle. Joe Gibbs got together before they left Washington, yesterday for their flight here to Phoenix uh, with his veteran group of players. There's been six players that have been with him for his entire 11 years here in Washington and Charles Mann and Daryl Green. And they just get together every once in a while and chat as to how's, how is it going. Daryl's not too sure he wants to be included in that group of old, old guys. <laughs> First down. Ready, Joe Nunn on Ricky Irvin. No game. Well, you know, Vern, you could probably make this play. Nobody gar blocks you. Number 50 is on the left side of our screen here, and nobody blocks him. He's got a free shot at Irvin's, and some type of mistake there in the offensive line. I'll give you this. I could have made contact. <laughs> I think then I would have been piggybacked down the field away. Here's Rippin. Nine forces him out, and he finds Gary Clark way down at the 38-yard line. A 22-yard gain and evidence of Mark Rippon's strength in his right arm. And agility in the pocket as he avoided the sack by Freddie Joe Nunn. Number 50 here working against Ed Simmons. Gets to the inside. Nice little move by Rippon. No other pressure by the Cardinals. And then Clark is wide open in the secondary. Big gain for the Redskins. Gary Clark, who has a knack for always saying that he's open, has been. He's caught five now. First down and 10, 14-7. Redskins trail, but they've dominated this second half. And here's Biner to the 24-yard line before Ken Harvey makes the tackle. That's a gain of 13 and puts Biner with 60 yards for the day. He had 62 last week. 
Now this is a famous counter play. Watch uh, Lachey come down here, lead the block. Donnie Warren actually from his wingback position with the kick out on Nunn. Good cut right here by Biner. Gets away from Lynch. Down to the 25. First down and 10. Redskins will throw. Gary Clark. Nope. Incomplete. Griffin may be one of the few quarterbacks in the league that throws long better than he throws short. He has a very strong arm. And he will improve his short passing game with experience. At that time, it appeared uh, he was way off the mark on just about a 10-yard pass. Why, why do you think that might be, Dan? That's really a good question, Vern. You would think that it's easier to throw short, but uh, sometimes you have to take something off and you learn touch through experience. And remember, this is only Rippon's fifth year. Second and ten now. Redskins trying to tie it up. Blitz is coming. Rippon goes right. Gary Clark, six catch. A yard and a half short of the first down as Aeneas Williams makes the tackle. The rookie. He just comes up a yard and a half short of that first down, Vern, because of the good coverage by Aeneas Williams, number 35. Ball is thrown well to the outside. He would have liked to have got the ball a little bit sooner after his break, but that's a sure tackle by Aeneas Williams, who may be the best rookie corner in the league. Gary Clark last week against Los Angeles went over 1,000 yards for the fifth time in the last six years in receiving. And look how Washington has dominated this quarter. Third and short. Rippon in the end zone. Sanders. Touchdown. That is four consecutive games, but Rippon is down. He just got the good news that he threw a touchdown by Lachey. That brought him around in a hurry. Talk about smelling salts. Lachey said, Rip, you got it for the six. He really got tagged. Another beautiful pass and a deep one. This is Sanders on the inside. He's going to run the corner route against Aeneas Williams. Pure speed here. One good move, and this ball is perfect. No question he's in the corner of the end zone for the touchdown. Four consecutive games with a touchdown pass now for Ricky Sanders. 25 touchdown passes for the season for Mark Griffin. And can you believe that they're reviewing this play? The big shot by Lorenzo Lynch right on Rippon's chin. Oh, he knew it all the way. He's, he knew it was a touchdown. <laughs> He's just taking a rest. Can't believe they're reviewing this play, though. It was a perfect job by Ricky Sanders of getting both feet down inbounds. Even made a divot with his feet in the end zone. Looked like my sandwich. A chili dip, perhaps. Yes, that's what I meant. One, two, there's the drag. After, after further review, the play stands as called. It is a touchdown. That's where the phrase, no kidding, came from. Or something like that. Yeah. Uh, I think the replay official, just another example of building their stats. Well, we reviewed four today, and all four were right. Low Miller to tie it up. And the Redskins giving evidence of why they have won 12 games earlier this year and why they have the best record in the National Football League. Each side, almost like the boxing referees, is like, hey, break. You know, <laughs> go to your respective corners. Go to your respective huddles. Get out of here. Raiders, the Raiders leading by six. You don't think they forgot about that uh, day last year in Ooh. Buffalo when they got beat by 49 or so? And, of course, earlier today, Philadelphia beat New York. Keep their hopes alive. Here's Gilbaugh back. Knocked away. A.J. Johnson, number 47. And Gilbaugh knocked down by Charles Mann, number 71. Three and out for Phoenix again. Well, man's coming against Tootie Robbins right in the middle of our screen here. And watch as he goes inside Robbins. And now, with the help of Jumpy Gathers, they just destroy Gelbach. Well, that's going to give Brian Mitchell another chance. And they've sent an extra man back with Mitchell, who is uh, 15 yards in front of him. There's Camarillo. Mitchell. 
29. Knocked down by Sidney Coleman and Anthony Edwards. It's Anthony Edwards. A 46-yard punt, four on the return. Edwards pleading for something, but he doesn't get it. You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. Mark Griffin has thrown for two touchdowns in quarter number three, which has 41 seconds remaining. The Redskins have tied it up 14-all, and they have the ball now with a first and 10 of their own. 33-yard line. Joe Bugle looking on with some concern now as Cardinals trying to break this five-game losing streak. Doris from threatening the blitz. He's not coming. They hand it off to Biner, who works his way out near the 36-yard line. You almost wonder with the Redskins' slow start this week and last week in Los Angeles, this is two back-to-back -back trips out west for the Cardinals, and they're unusual. They get in very late on Saturday night, and you wonder if their players are wide awake when they wake up in the morning. They started off terrible in the first half, but boy, if they turn it around here in the third quarter, 153 yards they've gained in the third, 155, and uh, Phoenix showing why they're where they are with their record. Zero yards in a quarter, and the quarter's over. That's the end of the third quarter with our score. Washington 14, Phoenix 14. Our coverage continues after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We begin the start of the fourth quarter with uh, the stand still not filled. And the Redskins dominating now in the second half, 155 yards to nothing for the Cardinals. They had 10 first downs to none in that first half. Here's the handoff on the right side to the 45. Eric Swan, number 98, makes the tackle of Ernest Viner. Viner now with 18 carries and 67 yards for the day. Washington, of course did not need the win because New Orleans lost. They have a secured home field advantage throughout the playoffs. And they finish out the season against the New York Giants and at Philadelphia. Third down and three. Griffin looking left all the way. Tipped incomplete. And for the first time in the second half, the Cardinal defense holds Washington and Ricky Sanders, the intended receiver, could not hang on. Look for the Cardinals here to come after the punter. They've got to do something on special teams to uh, get the momentum back. They were shut out, as uh, we talked about statistically, in that third quarter. But now they start the fourth with a three and out. And Kelly Goodburn has been blocked twice this year. Both those games, uh, both those blocks against Atlanta. And Jackson waits for it at the 20 yard line. No, they are not coming. And Goodburn gets away a fine punt taken at the 12. And a pretty good downfield job by Monty Coleman. Nine yards on the return, 49 on the punt for Goodburn. We're tied at 14. This one, you hear a lot about a team that has a record such as the Cardinals that they're playing for pride. Well, you know, the Redskins are playing for pride as well. They sure as heck don't want to lose this game to the Cardinals and play as poorly as they were in the first half. And, but that's rare to hear a team with 12 and 1 record saying that, uh, hey, we're playing this one for pride. That's usually reserved for losers. Mm -hmm. It is a tie ball game now, second down and eight. Ricky Cole starts in motion. Johnson trying to work the edges, gets to the outside. And he is cut down at the 29-yard line, a yard short, a two-yard short of the first down. Andre Collins with the tackle, number 55. Johnson shows some pretty good speed getting to the corner here. Inside the block by Walter Reeves. But there are just too many Redskins over here. Here's Andre Collins and Brad Edwards. And Collins hangs on, holds him before he gets that first down. Third and two. Phoenix only two of eight on third down conversions. And they're not going to get 
with this one. Eric Williams, number 75, who has enjoyed a resurgence of his career since being acquired last season from Detroit. And it'll be fourth down, and again, the Cardinals are going to have to punt. Earlier in the game, they went for it on fourth and short, but this time, uh, Bugle decides to go for the punt. Maybe he's going to fake this one. Joe said yesterday they had to take some chances. Of course, there's still 12.06 left in this game. Hawaii snaps it back. And Camarillo punts it away. Mitchell at the 20. And gang tackled it, knocked out of bounds. Larry centers one of those leading the charge on Ryan Mitchell. A 10-yard return of a 52-yard punt. Redskins have the ball in a tie game at 14. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Travelers. You're better off under the umbrella. Cannon, photographic consultant to the National Football League. And by Miller Light. It's it. And a big play of 30 yards. Oh, the play action by Rippon in the backfield really confused the Cardinals as Monk came on the crossing route. There was no one within 20 yards of him when he caught the ball. But this is the fourth quarter. This is the time the Redskins really turn it on. They've outscored their op opponents this year by 91 points. But look at Monk, number 81. Eric Hill says, there he goes. <laughs> and I don't think Eric Hill had responsibility for it. First down and 10 after the 30-yard gain. Here's Ricky Irvins. He weaves his way into the secondary and is tackled at the 30-yard line. Tackle made by Dave Dorson. Well, let's find out what's going on elsewhere in the NFL. Who's great? All right, Vern, at the King Dome in Seattle, John L. Williams on the sweep from five yards out, tightens it up. The 49ers lead at 17-16. The Seahawks fighting to keep their playoff hopes alive, Vern. All right, Greg, of course, Dan and I saw the 49ers last week, and they're putting together some kind of stretch now. But the Seahawks not only are playing for the playoffs, they may be playing for their coach, Chuck Knox. Right. A lot of speculation about his future. Second down and one, 14-14 ball game. Irvings. First down, Redskins at the 24-yard line. Lorenzo Lynch with the tackle. Dan was talking about how they have dominated opponents in the fourth quarter. 132 to 41. That's why you're 12 and 1, along with uh, a number of other reasons statistically for the Redskins. Cardinals called time. Phoenix. Phoenix has used one of their allotted three. There's Fritz Shermer. Defensive coordinator and Joe Gibbs. I Joe. played for Joe back in 1979 in San Diego and in 1980. Talk about a tremendous offensive coaching staff. Listen to the guys we had. Not only did we have Joe as our offensive coordinator, but Jim Hannafin was our offensive line coach. Uh, up in the box, we had Ernie Zampezi as our wide receiver coach and as a head coach, Don Coriel. Coriel is really the, uh, the connection here. You look at these uh, guys here, Gibbs, Dow Hauer, Severe, and Rennie Simmons, they were all teammates at San Diego State under Don Coriel. And Hannafin, of course, uh, was a coach there. Now, the other guy that we don't see there is Big John Madden, who is the defensive coordinator for that great uh, San Diego State team. You taught him everything he knows, right? Well, John's in the bus right now. <laughs> I didn't teach him how to ride that bus. <laughs> but I was uh, very fortunate to have worked with some of the best offensive mind, minds that the game has ever seen. 9.55 to go. And on first down, Ricky Irvin's knocked down at the 25-yard line. That's why I sit here and I envy Mark Rippon because they not only ha he has the basis of that system that I ran in San Diego, but over the years, the beauty of the system is you adjust it to your personnel. 
uh, Joe has really had a lot of success running the ball behind his jumbo package. And now he's got, uh, of course, for the number of years, the great receivers in Monk, Clark, and Sanders. The Redskins are the best balanced offensive football team in the league. And they are 12 and 1. They're second and 11. Ripping off his back foot, throws it away. Sanders ostensibly the intended receiver. It'll be third down. Is, is this offense, do you recognize it right away, Dan? It's changed quite a bit from when I played uh, because we didn't run the ball as effectively as the Redskins, although we had effective runners in Chuck Muncie and James Brooks. But uh, what Gibbs has done is really put it together as far as situations. When to go with the, the jumbo package, the three tight ends, when to put in two running backs, when to put in the posse. Uh, they, they've got it all. Third and 10. Third and 11 officially. Three-man rush again, ripping back. And that's going to be incomplete. Intended for Monk inside the 10-yard line. And Robert Massey, very happy with himself. <laughs> Very good coverage. Massey was out for a couple of weeks this year with about a hepatitis. And that set back the Cardinals. Rippon very upset. I believe he's mad with the play selection there. He did not want to go on that short roll out there. Well, that's going to bring on Low Miller, who's been slumping in the last couple of weeks. A 42 yard effort to break the tie and give the Redskins their first lead of the game. It is done. Joe Gibbs seems thrilled. 17-14. Next Saturday, CBS presents more NFL football. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing against the Chicago Bears. The Bears involved in a very tight fight with the Detroit Lions for the NFC Central Division Championship. Chicago won today, and Detroit is uh, leading in their game over the Jets. And Low Miller for the third time. Doesn't matter which direction, he puts it out of the end zone. A little medical repair for Dave Dewerson on the Cardinal bench. You could have fixed this, and I'd be still looking good. You know? That is important. He's talking about stitching it. This will help uh, Dewerson decide on that law career in a big hurry. <laughs> well, three times this half, the Cardinal offense has had the ball. Three times they have gone three plays and punt. They are looking for their first first down of the half. Gelbar, pressure, batted down, incomplete pass. Quickly so signaled by Bernie Cooker. Cooker. And it was Wilbur Marshall who was literally in his face. But the Cardinals really have that Lawrence Welk offense working, though, don't they? That one, yeah. two, three kick, three times in a row. They ended that first half on a real high note. 14 nothing at halftime. And then they reverted to their old ways, unable to stop the Redskins on offense and unable to move the ball when they've had the ball. Gelba, 11 of 20. Stunts by the Redskin defense. Gelba across the middle deep. Intercepted. Picked off by Brad Edwards. And Edwards has a first down. Washington at the 16-yard line. That is his fourth interception of the season. Another of the Plan B acquisitions. Edwards came over from Minnesota. Well, here he is back here, and this is just a real easy interception as Gelbaugh is trying to hit the wide receiver at the bottom of the screen, and he throws it right into the teeth of the defense. Edwards with an easy job of reacting to the ball and making the catch. At the Office of Media Services, Chatter punches to the 16 with his fourth pick of the year. There's the attempt to get it into Prohl, but Prohl has no idea where the ball is for good reason he's reading the defense he figures there's no way the ball's coming my way Edwards is deep and as a result of the second interception Washington puts it in play at the 16 Biner goes right 
and he is down at the 15 yard line so a Washington team that seemed somewhat disinterested in the first half has just dominated completely both sides of the football here in quarter numbers three and four and that's basically what they've done all year the worrisome thing for Gibbs is what has happened to his ball club in the first half of the last two weeks last week against the Rams as we talked about they were leading 7-6 and today unbelievably down 14 nothing at the intermission it'll be second down from the 50 under eight minutes now Miner gets the handoff and he is down inside the 10 short of the first down by a couple of yards Lorenzo Lynch with the tackle. Can that can that kind of thing carry on through? Can it linger? You bet it can, especially when you look at who the Redskins have up the next two weeks. But again, you'd say, well, what are they playing for? They don't have the uh, unbeaten string to shoot for anymore. They don't have to uh, win to get the home field. They don't have to win to get the division. The important thing for Gibbs is to maintain that business type of approach and hope that his team doesn't go flat heading into the playoffs. Third down. Rippon has thrown for two already. Art Monk can't hang on. It'll be fourth down and Chip Lomelo will come on. And there's a good example of, of Rippon's problems throwing the short pass. This ball to Monk was thrown behind him and thrown very hard. A receiver as great as Art Monk is can't make this grab as he has to reach behind himself to try to grab that ball. Just thrown too hard by Rippon. And as a result, Chip Lomiller is on to try a squib kick almost. 27-yard field goal to increase the lead to six. It was 14-0 at the half. Phoenix. Rippon threw twice the touchdowns in quarter number three. And Lomiller has now kicked twice for field goals in quarter number four. So the Washington Redskins assuming command under Joe Gibbs about to win for the seventh consecutive time and the 29th in the last 34 meetings between these two teams. Barring something from Stan Gelbo and his offensive teammates and they've shown no spark. I wonder if we might not see Chris Chandler uh, shortly now. Well, he's warming up on the sidelines. He has his helmet on. Gelbo has his helmet off. And this is our new quarterback, Chris Chandler. Now, he's only down by six points, seven minutes to go. We've kind of almost given this game to the Redskins because they've outplayed the Cardinals by such a wide margin here in the second half, but six points is uh, just a touchdown, and the lead is a conversion away. Chris Chandler, of course, a third-round draft choice out of the University of Washington by the Colts, and then acquired by Tampa Bay for a number one draft pick. He got into some well-publicized squabbles with Vinny Testaverde this year, started three games there, and gets a word of encouragement from Joe Bugle, was placed on waivers by the Buccaneers. They just gave up their number one draft choice and claimed by the Cardinals. He's about to see his first action. Well, it can't all go right for Miller. This one hits the crossbar and comes back. That's the only thing that has prevented him from kicking it out of the end zone entirely is the crossbar. So now we're going to see Chris Chandler in his first offensive appearance for the Phoenix Cardinals. And he the reason Chandler is so well thought of in the league, or the reason the, the Bucks gave up that number one pick, is because he has had a history of performing well in these types of situations with his team behind in the fourth quarter. He did it a couple times for Tampa Bay. Let's see if he can do it now for Phoenix. First down and 10. They hand it off to Johnny Johnson. He works left, and Edwards makes the tackle at the 23-yard line. Chandler's demeanor when you meet him is rather quiet, and then you read some of the things in the papers that he had to say in his battle with Testaverde, and it's like a voice coming from someone you don't recognize. But he was very outspoken about uh, Vinny Testaverde and the problems in Buccaneers. Yeah, and today, uh, Tessa Verde has been quoted as saying he wants to be traded away from Tampa Bay. Not a bad idea. <laughs> Second down, here's Chandler. In trouble. A lot of room on that left side, but he cannot get by Wilbur Marshall. 
Tremendous speed by Wilbur Marshall as he chased down Chandler. It appeared that uh, Chandler had the corner. He's got good speed as well, number 17 here. He's got to be a little surprised at number 58 coming all the way from the right side of the screen, runs him down without any problem. Marshall's having a heck of a year. And that brings up third down and five. 20 to 14, 544 to go. Redskins lead by six. And the Cardinals still looking for their first first down of the second half. Chandler in trouble. Circles back. He's in more trouble now. And somehow finds a receiver for the first down. That's Walter Reeves. And for Walter Reeves, that is his eighth catch of the year. And it's a first down Cardinals. But what's he got to lose? What has Chandler got to lose by making this play? Absolutely nothing. He's in all kinds of problems here. First it's man from the right side, Marshall from the left. Now he turns around, and who's coming at him again? There's Marshall. But he knew where Reeves was, and Reeves makes a nice catch for the first down. First first down of the second half for the Phoenix Cardinals. 4.45 to go. 20 to 14, Chandler back. Right side. Incomplete in front of Ernie Jones. Chris said he had taken about 40% of the snaps this week. So he knew that he might play, but he looks a little winded. He looks very winded, and that is not surprising. 40% of the snaps, and I'm sure that uh, he's not in the best of shape. He hasn't played in about a month since he was with the Bucks. He says he's comfortable with 100% of the offense, but you got to wonder about that, too, without any training camp at all, coming to a brand-new ball club in the middle of the year. Claimed on waivers November 6th, just over a month ago. Second down and 10, 20 to 14, Washington leads. Jammer with a play fake, pulls up, fires, caught. Ernie Jones. And the Cardinals find a spark. A gain of 23. Well, Ernie Jones has caught over 50 passes this year. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. And the thing about him is he reminds me a lot of Sterling Sharp after he catches the ball. A lot of leg strength pulls away from Mayhew and enough speed to get down the field. Back-to-back -back first downs for this Cardinal team that now... He is driving for the first time in this half. They trail by just six. And by getting out of bounds, Jones stopped the clock with over four minutes to go. Cardinals have two timeouts left. Short setup. Knocked down. Eric Williams got it, number 75. Tom Tupa looks on, so does Joe Bugle. Well, they teach defensive linemen that if they can't get to the quarterback, stop and put your hands up and get in his throwing lane. Great job that time by Eric Williams with the timing to swat that one away. Second and 10. 421 to go. 20 to 14, Washington. Chandler, Jones, over the outside corner. Incomplete. Now, I wonder how much the Redskins can know about Chris Chandler. They didn't face him at Tampa Bay, and of course he spent uh, the first part of his career in the AFC. I don't think that really matters in, in nope. this situation because uh, this is a veteran defense coached by a veteran uh, guy who's well-respected around the league, Richie Pettibone. He's seen all types of quarterbacks. He's certainly seen Chris Chandler's type. That time he came after him with a full blitz. See what they've got in mind on third and ten. Four, sixteen remaining. Four-man rush. Fumble. Did he clip that out? Unbelievable throw. Wow, I thought it had gone down. Unbelievable throw. Jumpy Gethers was on his, on Chandler's back when he let this one go. My gracious. 
Chandler's 6'4", 220 pounds, and watch how he gets rid of this ball. From the left side, Gethers is on his back. He's going down. He flips it underhand before his knees hit. The official's right there on the call, the correct call. And you won't see a better play from a quarterback than that one. Well, it was short, so it's fourth down. And here's the punt by Camarillo. Fair catch call by Brian Mitchell at the 10-yard line. 3.26 to go. 38-yard punt. Nothing on the return. Chris Chandler hoping for one more chance. And the Redskins have two games left before the playoffs, of course. NFC Eastern Division opponents, the New York Giants at home next week, and then at Philadelphia on the final weekend of the regular season. And the Giants need to win that game to salvage something, something out of their season. What a terrible disappointment to go from Super Bowl champs to a 7-7 seven and seven record. Redskins first and 10, 326 to go. They're up by six. Crowd of 48,000 here. Now in the first half, Joe Bugle used his timeouts inside the final three minutes of play. He's got two left. And Dorson came out of that pile running towards the bench wanting to know if you want us to call timeout now and Bugle said no we want to wait a little bit but you can tell that the spark that Chandler provided for the offense is carried over to the Cardinal defense as they have the Redskins backed up inside the 15. Dorson who had uh, his right eye taped up getting the crowd into it second down. Need is 8, 243 remaining in the game. 20 to 14, Redskins up by six. Miner out near the 16-yard uh, line, and now Phoenix does use a timeout. It comes with 232 to go. So they'll get another stoppage of play at the two-minute warning. They do have one timeout left. And they need a big defensive play here on third down. Well, they got one, too, here. Number 22 is Dorson playing with a uh, cut above his right eye. Watch as he sticks his head right in there on Biner. And then gets up quickly, looks to the sideline, gets the signal for the timeout, and tells the official. That's why Dave Dorson has been around this league for so many years, why he's so well-respected. Toughness and intelligence. Dave Doris had an interesting perspective on the Giants' problems, having spent a year there. And uh, in, in all candor, said he thought that Coach Ray Hanley had let things get away from him up too, there. Too many changes. Right. And a, a lot of the changes have focused on the offense with the quarterback situation, but Dorson felt that all the defensive players saw what Hanley did with Hostetler and Sims, and they said, hey, if he can do that to Sims, we're all, we all might be in trouble. There's a lot of looking over the shoulder, Dorson said, in New York. Third down. Caught! What a big play. And guess who? Ripping to Gary Clark. A gain of 14. And that offensive line does a super job of keeping them away from ripping. There's nobody anywhere near him. The Cardinals come with just a three-man rush. And again, Clark finds the open area in the secondary. And you called it right, Vern. That was a huge play for the first down. Gary Clark over 1,000 yards for the season. Could go over 100 for today. And now the two-minute warning. So a big third down play for Mark Griffin and his Redskin teammates. They lead by six, and they have a fresh set of downs. Okay, Mr. Fouts, listen up. What is the country and western capital of the United States? Nashville? Yeah. No. Austin? Branson, Missouri. Oh, come on. Branson, Missouri, you say? Yes, I say. I say to you, that's right. And they've got more theater seats than Broadway. And 60 Minutes has a whole block of them reserved for tonight. That's going to be followed by Brooklyn Bridge, which is a terrific show, by the way. And then the CBS Sunday movie, Beaches, starring Bette Midler and Barbara Hershey as two women whose unlikely friendship survives the test of time. All of that tonight on CBS. Two minutes to go. First and ten. Keep it on the ground. Oh, boy. Oh, 
Eric Swan, who is about as quick as any big man in the league. About 320 pounds, and watch as he comes over here and he beats the block of Donnie Warren. This is one thing that he has impressed the coaches with is his ability to move that 320 pounds in a hurry. He's about as big as any quick man in the league, too. And the Cardinals used timeout after the loss on the play, and uh, that is their final one of the ball game. 48,000 plus on hand. 30th consecutive game in which the Cardinals have not sold out, but most of those who came are still here. And it's been a good ball game. 14 0 Phoenix up at the half. Washington dominating the second half and rolling to a 20 0 lead. And Chris Chandler supplied a bit of a spark for the Cardinals before the drive stalled. And it looks right now as though Phoenix is going to lose its sixth in a year in, in a row. And the Cardinals will fall to 4 and 10. Washington on the verge now of going to 13 and 1 for the year. Got to wonder about the Redskins' confidence level, though. It had to be shaking pretty good in that first half when they were down 14 nothing. Second down and 13. Minor out near the 33-yard line. Dave Dewerson with the tackle, but the Cardinals cannot stop the clock. And here comes Bostic. Joe Bostic getting into a shoving match with somebody. Well, Mike Jones took a shot at him, and Jones doesn't even have his helmet on. You never want to pick a fight on a football field when you don't have your helmet on. It's your last uh, line of defense. And it'll be third down and five. 122 and the clock running. Joe Bostic, who made this Redskin team as a free agent years ago. Now get your helmet on before he comes back and hits you. Rippin walks back, calls timeout, stops the clock just before the uh, play clock expired. Time has been called with 103 remaining in regulation play. Mark Rippin, Jim Hannafin, Wayne Sevier, Joe Gibbs, Don Bro, Brain Trust. A lot of experience in that little conversation. Well, and very few people realize that Wayne Sevier, their special teams coach, was Don Coriel's very first quarterback at San Diego State. And of course, Wayne takes credit for all the other quarterbacks <laughs> that have played for Don Coriel throughout Including the year. Including you, by the way. Oh, you bet. In fact, he says, I owe him money from all the uh, money I made playing football. I'm just reminded of something Joe Gibbs said last night comparing you to Mark Griffin that I think we ought to share with everybody. The handoff goes to Biner, and watch out. That will put it away. Ball game, somebody, somebody said. And it will be. A 32-yard gain for Ernest Biner. And he goes over 100 yards. He's got 116 now, which is his high for the season. And isn't he happy? That run there was his longest run of the year as well. What a great time to pull it out for the Redskins. But the Cardinals are all up here trying to stop the Redskins with the blitz. There's Lynch. He gets double teamed. Big hole. And now into the secondary. And Aeneas Williams comes over to make the tackle eventually. And in finishing, all Joe Gibbs said was that when Mark Griffin roams around the pocket looking for receivers, he sometimes reminds him, Joe Gibbs, of a guy who wore team, wore 14 for San Diego named Dan Fox. That's a heck of a compliment for a guy 40 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Longtime associates and co-coaches, Joe Gibbs and Joe Bugle. Well, the Cardinals come close, but they can't hold off the surge in the second half. Mark Griffin throws for two. Chip Lowmiller with two field goals, providing the difference. And the Redskins win it, their 13th victory of the year. 20-14 the final. The post-game show coming up next. <laughs> 